Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 398. Um, each week we uh, meet here to discuss and review the, the, the questions and answers uh, asked on um, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Uh, with us tonight we have uh, Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He recently, uh, his, his agency uh, um, was recently awarded the title of, of uh, Best Local Agency in Middle Earth. Um, <laughs> and uh, Tim uh, is uh, um, uh, a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. He's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, Rob Mars, he joins us today from um, um, the Netherlands. Uh, he uh, is an AdWords aficionado. Um, and uh, also a Google product expert in the uh, AdWords English community. Yeah. Okay. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of uh, wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google product expert on the uh, uh, AdSense uh, community. And... Um, David Rosam, a leading internet marketer based in the sunny south of England. Um, as uh, I've forgot to mention that uh, Masataki is um, based in Wimbledon, in, in, in the suburb of London. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, and yes, D David is based in West Sussex uh, in the sunny south of the UK. All right, so... Um, we have, um, uh, I think it's about six or seven questions tonight. Um, it, um, and the first question is, is, is it's titled, A Change in Ranking from a No-Follow Link. And Konjol Chowan wants to know, has anyone observed a change in ranking when you built a No-Follow Link for a web page on a niche-specific website? That was good. Uh, what he means is, did, did the focus keywords rankings change? Um, and uh, I see Tim Kappa uh, said from a one single link, no. Yeah, honestly, I don't think a no for one single link from a like that's been no followed. Like even if it was a followed link, uh, a perfectly normal link. Uh, I, I really don't think you're going to see a change uh, in anything for whatever that anchor text was. I, yeah, I, I just don't see it, man. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, and I think with the discussion later on, it was more in terms of blog postings and stuff. So the 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 conversation that went on to basically saying look if you know just don't don't pursue that strategy in that sense um you should rather be looking at and if you are looking at a kind of link that you know is going to be no followed um like a lot of major editorials and newspapers um the point is you should be looking at the value of it in terms of or what kind of brand exposure are you going to get? What kind of people are actually going to come through to your site? Um, <clears throat> and things like that. You know, if, if, you, if you're looking at a link, you should be looking at different things rather than actually ranking. Because, you know, if you're putting up all that effort into putting something out there, whether it be content or whatever the case may be, if people aren't coming to your site, then it's pretty much useless. Yeah, but <clears throat> let's suppose that one link, that one no-follow link, brings in a lot of traffic. Then that link could influence the value Google gives to the destination of that link. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Um, it's not black and white. 
Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. But um, I just get the feeling that this is not a uh, a destination location that's linking. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but I like I've always said in this, you know, in Damesia questions time and time again, if you get a mention somewhere um, and it's no followed and you get 50,000 people following that link and out of that 50,000, 10,000 or 5,000 or 2,000 actually convert by the product or whatever the case may be, the fact that that's a no follow is irrelevant, you know. It's it's done its job. It's built your branding. It's it's provided a good product. People have bought it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's it's you know like why why are we even discussing no follow link in that context then? Um, because it did what the link is meant to actually do in the first place. Um, I think people kind of just get too bogged down by the fact of, oh, I need to get a link to get an anchor, but the ultimate at the end of the day is, well, if you're getting this link, like, wh why are you so focused on, like, what's it going to do for my website rather than actually what's it doing for my business? Yeah, do, do you know what I mean? I, I, it's just weird. I just don't understand it. Well, it's quite obvious it's because everybody has been telling for 20 years now that you need to build links. I know, I know, I know. It's just crazy, man. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it troubles me. Um... It's like... <laughs> Go ahead. It's like imagining that if this, you know, sort of if you took this into the real world and some, you know, and you went to a business and went, hey, can I um, get some advertising? But uh, like, you know what I mean? If you advertised in a newspaper or uh, your local magazine or something like this and you spent whatever or whatever the case would be and you didn't get a single call out of that, it's like you would instantly not consider doing that again or you would you would look at different do you know what i mean and but people are still like so intent of grabbing links that do nothing for them that they, they don't even think about looking at the link a year down the line going okay i spent x amount of time producing the content or whether i was involved in a punk or whatever the case would be whatever that kind of content was and i've got a link it's like nobody actually sits back and goes, well, you know what? I spent this amount of time or this on content or whatever, and I've literally had not a single visit to my site from that link. And there's, and there's no actual way of evaluating, in a sense, that one single link's anchor text in the terms of what it actually did for your site. But you can so easily check in terms of, what it actually produced to your site and, and, and people just i don't know i just don't know why they yeah okay right let's um, move on to uh, number two on our run list if i can find where my mouse went um, this one is from Robin Shields Harris. It's titled, I have a question about no follow or do follow links. Um, Robin said, I'm new to SEO and I had a question. Um, if a company wants to put a paid sponsored uh, article on our website and requests uh, a do follow link, is this a good idea? How does it help or hurt our website? Um, we recently got flagged by Google for a post and we do not want this to happen again. Up until now, we had not done uh, nofollow links because we didn't know how, didn't know to do so. Um, any helpful suggestions um, uh, 
um, would would be uh, appreciated. Uh, Robin, so firstly, like, if people are approaching you to put content to your site, um, and then they say, oh, like, the, the usual typical approach is, this will fit really well, and they've looked at you, and look at this article, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, look, just, just, just bin him, man. Bin him, totally. Like, no. Uh, you know, nine times out of ten, that article isn't original. They've freaking published it elsewhere. Um, they're literally using your brand that you've built up over years to benefit themselves and nothing else. That is it, as simple as. The question also you said is paid or sponsored. Well, you shouldn't be using no follow. You should be using rel paid, uh, sorry, rel sponsored links. Um, uh, that's what you should be using if you're going to do it to tell Google that they paid for that link. Um, but even if they did, I would certainly double check that that, that article because every single time, and I get, I don't know, 20, 30 of those a bloody week. Um, every time it's like, no, you know, this article has been, it's, it's crap. Um, it offers no value to any of my, my, my users. Um, and also a big chunk of the time it's already been published elsewhere in some various other form. So like, just don't, you know, if people approach you with that stuff, just no, 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 no. Um, and if you do decide to go for it, you should be using rel sponsored for new paid for paid links. You can still chuck on the no follow. That's the old school, but Google's brought out uh, some different directives at the minute. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else before we move on to the next? Okay, number three on our run list is from Nick Dawes. It's titled Outsourcing Content Creation. Nick said, hey guys, uh, a truly dumb question. So it's in the right place. I recently finished a website for my brother who has started selling pet food online. Um, the site works fine. We've sold approximately 500 pounds in the first week, uh, mostly within the circle of his Facebook following. He had had a brick and mortar store for several years. Um, we're uh, promoting the site and I'm looking into uh, content creation. Uh, we've built blog functionality into the site and from what I understand, we should be posting three to four original, interesting and relevant items a month. My question is, uh, would a marketing agency typically handle content creation on behalf of a client? If so, how do they create original content for industries um, in which they're not experts? So just a quick thing on this three to four articles a month. No, it's th that like, no, you don't have to go and publish three to four articles a month. What you should be doing is publishing stuff. So the whole idea here in terms of content is, uh, users go through a purchasing journey online, right? Uh, it's very rare that a user will wake up in the morning and search for that, let's put it in air quotes, that main keyword for that business. Users will typically undertake some kind of purchasing journey uh, where they search a little bit, a bit about this or they ask a question on this, they ask a question on that, whether it's, you know, uh, and all sorts of little bits of different bobs before they realize, actually, this is the product I'm looking for, or this is the kind of service I need. And then they make those final things. So your content should, uh, can be in various forms. Um, and it, but if it's typically blog content, one of the better ways is to target that your, your people come into your business to provide them with that information during their purchasing journey. So when they see your information, um, you know, you're providing them with accurate information um, that they can take away. They may see that three or four times from your same brand during the purchasing journey with different questions, queries, 
uh, insights and you're building brand affinity and ultimately then they trust you and then purchase from you. Uh, content can also be video, content can also, you know, there's all sorts of different types of sort of content. Uh, yeah, you, you, you typically, you typically a marketing agency typically would uh, create content to help their client. Uh, but this kind of content is like, again, is, is researched in gaps um, in, in where the client can benefit uh, from producing content for, for their users to then push them towards either making a purchasing decision on the site or, you know, whatever that may be. Um, and yeah, there's content creation services. You can uh, use copywriters. There's all sorts of different ways. Um, but as with anything, do your, you know, do your uh, due diligence. Don't go for the guy that reckons I can write an article for like, like 20 bucks. Um, you know, do, do, do your due diligence. Um, there's loads of services out there. There's uh, there's also freelancers out there. You know, copywriters. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of companies offering this. So you know, you can you can you can find it. Thank you, Tim. Uh, anybody else? Right. Let's go to number uh, four on our run list. It's oh no wonder you're here, Rob. <laughs> Um, Rob Mars uh, posted a question. What is the preferred use, subdomain or folder? Um, and Rob said, uh, I need some help for a friend of ours. Uh, we have a website. Uh, is that Johnny? Um, Rob? No? no? Okay. Uh, we have a website, website.se, and we wanted to add a shop to our website. During the process of building the shop, we asked the builder to locate the shop on website.se slash shopping. Um, we were told this was not possible due to the uh, nature of the shop and, and the content management system that they were building for us. Um, it could only be located on shopping slash, um, actually it's not shopping slash, it's, um, Shopping dot uh, website um, dot uh, se. Um, although Google consistently tells us domain or subfold, it doesn't matter for indexing and ranking. I'd like your second opinion on what is the preferred use: subdomain or folder, and and what kind of surprises can we expect in Search Console when we use a shopping dot website dot se instead of website dot SE slash shopping. An additional question would be, or could we perhaps locate the entrance of the shop on the website, SE slash shopping, uh, and have the rest of the shop on shopping.website.se. We feel um, website.se is easier to communicate. Would it be nice to hear your opinions? Kind regards, Rob. Um, the the flip answer is if the CMS can only go on um, was it the subdomain or the the folder uh, then that's where it have to go um, and there isn't any real advantage or disadvantage in choosing one or the other um, so go with what the technology forces you to do and don't worry about the uh, uh, the, the consequences of doing so. I noticed that Michael Martin has uh, said much more about it than I did, so maybe there's some uh, maybe there's some wisdom in there that I haven't imparted. But uh, uh, I think that's it, really. Yes, I'm. I'm asking this because one of my clients is changing to shop dot. And the other one is changing to slash shop. And both have more or less the same arguments to switch over. Um, but I always find it very hard that a shop builder is so inflexible that they can't put it where 
the client wants it. Um, and it seems that it has to do with, with uh, the rights that somebody has on uh, slash shopping slash instead of shopping dot website in the uh, second one they can have full control over hosting and over management and with a uh, dot com slash shopping they they would be stuck to the hosting kind of things from the original website builder manager yeah well, when i've ha had incidents of this in the past it's been when the um the shop has been um, almost a service on a on a different uh, on a different server, um, dictating that that it should be on a subdomain. Um, but I'm not a um, I, I'm not a server uh, a server expert. Uh, I don't know if uh, if Jim, who, who probably knows more about servers than, than uh, I will ever do. Um, I don't know if he, he's got any thoughts about it. Well, well, you're you're asking me, David. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I I wasn't actually throwing it at you because that would be cruel. Um, <laughs> I I was giving you the option of asking because of your what I would think is your your uh, greater knowledge than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, it, it, it um, yeah, I, I vouch that it, it makes no difference whether you use um, a, a folder um, a, or, or a subdomain. If you use a subdomain, of course, you're doubling your hosting costs because um, the, the, um, um, the subdomain needs needs to be hosted, um, and. Um, uh, look, I think the reason that it doesn't matter is that because dub 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 uh, is a subdomain in itself. Um, so uh, you know, obviously Google couldn't um, treat them as a special case. They, they oh, but in, in, in Search Console, Google is uh, connecting uh, dub 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 to the normal one, but it isn't connecting. Uh, subdomain uh, dot domain so they do make a difference be between the, the, the and wow. another domain and since google is now uh, assigning uh rel canonicals themselves i assume they won't uh, assign rel canonicals to a subdomain and they would to a folder, for instance. Hmm. If, if a product sheet is, or product sheet page is almost the same as a shopping product page, one of the two should be con canonical, preferably. Yeah, well, I, I think that would be a discussion itself. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh... And no, I, I, I think we'd have to say it depends. Hey, you start to look something like John Muller. <laughs> Congrats, uh, Jim. <laughs> he weighs less than me. Anyway. All right, so have we, have we covered this book, oh, by the way. Yeah, I, I want to thank uh, Michael Martinez uh, again for uh, his uh, answer. Yes, well, I, I was going to say I can't move on without uh, thanking uh, uh, Michael Martinez. And uh, I see that in the answer, in the follow-ups, you also uh, uh, agreed. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, people like Michael Martinez and, um, say, Brenda Malone and, and Michael Stricker. Um, Brooke Sheldon. Yeah. Answer, the, answer questions uh, through the week and make uh, dumb SEO questions uh, 
what I think is the most that valuable resource. Anyway, our next question is number five on the run list. It's um, telling. It's titled "Telling the Search Engines to Ignore Some Text." Chris Green is asking. He said, "Hey guys, we need to add a legal disclaimer. Fifty-two words brackets." Uh, onto every page on our site. I'm afraid it may de-optimize content. Is there a way to add it but tell search engines to ignore the text while still crawling and um, indexing the page? Um, I wonder whether this is uh, going about this in the wrong way. Um, I very... I'm very concerned at the thought that 52 words might de-optimize the content um, of the pages. Um, it doesn't sound as if there's very much content. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not optimization. It's, it's quality uh, uh, and, and value to the, uh, to the reader. Um, so I'm not sure that 52 words... Um, uh, if you're worrying about 52 words uh, uh, de-optimizing your, uh, your content, then I think you need to go back and have a look at your content. Um, the other thing is that Google tends on a, on a well, uh, on, on, on a site with lots of nice content on, lots of good quality content on, Google tends to ignore the, the, standing, uh, the standing content. Stuff like the the footer with with your address and your links to all the various sections of the sites, um, and your brand message and so on and so forth. It it says, oh look, it's here on every single page. I, it's you know, it's that kind of thing. I'm going to ignore it. We're going to ignore it. Can't give can't Google uh, a person, can I? But um, um, I. Yes, I think there's lots of good uh, arguments about how how you can uh, uh, how you can tell tell um, search engines to ignore the text, but I um, I wouldn't worry myself, um, but I would worry about the the quality of your content. Well spoken. Yeah, um, it, it it seems to me that. that um, the, the 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 52 words i mean it, it's fairly simple to um, uh, place a link on on every page uh, say called legal disclaimer and, and put your legal disclaimer file uh, into a folder um, um somewhere on the site um but um there's really no need to do it um i mean googlebot uh, is smart enough to when when Googlebot encounters boilerplate uh, that, that they know. And the other thing is that Google uh, doesn't um, rank websites. G um, Google ranks pages. That's why it's called page rank, not website rank. Um, and Google Google pay uh, ranks uh, um, pages, and so. Whether the, the, this legal disclaimer is on the page or, or not on the page, or it's just a link, really doesn't matter. I don't think. I think it, it's. Uh, I, I mean, I, I can understand where Chris is coming from, um, but really, I don't think it, it, in this case it needs to be considered. Any anybody else? All right, let's, um, that time again, when I click this button, we're going to be at thank you for watching time. Um, we'll um, be back um, the same time uh, next week. I can't go without thanking uh, Michael Martinez, uh, Michael Stricker, Brenda Malone. Um, I thank them for the, the, the uh, interest and, and um uh, the, the contribution, that the, the valuable contribution that they make uh, each and every week. Um, and, um, yeah, we'll be back at the same time. If I can figure out which button to click here, 
um, to stop this thing happening. There we go. Got it. 